I'm Dorothy Poppy, the Executive Director of the Chiari and Syringomyelia Foundation, CSF. Part of our strategic mission is to host a think tank meeting, and this year we're in Miami, Florida at the Lois Pope Center for Life. At this meeting, physicians and scientists from across the country come together to collaborate on ideas to solve the problems of Chiari malformation, syringomyelia, and related disorders. The Chiari and Syringomyelia Foundation are sponsoring a conference hosted by one of the thought leaders, Professor and Chairman Barth Green from the University of Miami. It was a fascinating collection of the thought leaders in genetics, neurology, neurological surgery, scientific research, veterinary medicine, and the foundation supporters and executives. In Miami, we have a huge attendance and uh, from uh, folks from many walks of life, all committed to one thing, and is, that is to solving the problem, unlocking the key. And all of these groups um, seem to live in their own little worlds. Uh, and there's very little cross-fertilization. There's not a single journal that you can go to which has all of those people in it. No center has enough patients alone, so it has to be multi-center. That's why this group and scientific board are so very important because of the ability to reach thousands of people and patients and families and doctors and nurses and allied health professionals who treat patients with Chiari and syringomyelia. There are engineers, who, who are studying the impact of uh, cerebrospinal fluid circulation. But now we have genetic experts from places like Duke, and we're bringing in more and more other experts in areas um, outside of medicine. There's a, a top veterinary surgeon uh, involved with the group who does carry work in animals and adds the, uh, the knowledge that comes from comparative medicine. Members of the group are the most published surgeons in the history of mankind. Uh, one has published 800 manuscripts, another member has published uh, 500 manuscripts and 15 textbooks. The CSF Foundation has put together a medical board um, of some of what I consider, my opinion, the best people in the field. This is a group of scientists and clinicians, not only across the United States, but really across the world. Medicine is still mostly art and very little science. And the people with Chiari and Syringomyelia deserve multi-center studies, prospective, randomized, controlled studies, which are the type of a research project that allows one to come up with what's called evidence-based medicine, which is the highest level, level one, and there are no such studies for Chiari. We have a very, very important responsibility to collect data over large populations. I think we need a registry that is uh, difficult and expensive to maintain, but is the most important part of going forward to make the lives of people with these conditions better. This is a tremendous opportunity now for this group to gain the funding and to also, through lobbying and education of our government, uh, gain funding from the federal government and also from foundations that, that fund this type of research that can result in a change in medical and surgical practice and a better life for the thousands and thousands of people out there dealing with these challenges. A number of our families have a history of a connective tissue disorder, something like Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome or Marfan Syndrome. So this kind of fits a little bit with one of the hypotheses we have, which is maybe Chiari malformation is caused by the bones at the back of the skull kind of being too small and kind of pushing on a normal sized brain. The work that is done at uh, Duke by Dr. Allison Ashley Koch and her uh, group of uh, investigators uh, has identified some gene 
abnormalities uh, that seem to be present in patients who have familial uh, carry malformation with or without syringomyelia. So it might make sense that there's some biologic relationship between connective tissue and Chiari malformation. In years to come, then, if we can identify a genetic abnormality in some people, that we can also alter the abnormality in the genes and prevent their offspring from having, uh, being afflicted with uh, syringomyelia and Chiari malformation. There may even be um, environmental factors that we are not aware of uh, that could extend all the way from uh, maternal uh, nutrition to uh, things that we are not able to identify as yet. We need to be able to not just take the, the, the uh, experiences that I have or that some of the other members of the board have, but try to get as many people involved um, and the driving force has to be the patients to have uh, registries. The, and part of that is uh, all Chiaris are not created equally. There are many different causes, there are many different settings, and they do respond differently. And most people do think that Chiari is one thing. And we have to get the data on large population of this condition in order to really move forward. One of the other things that CSF has become interested in and starting to investigate is a potential connection between Chiari malformations and autism. So we really don't know a lot right now about that potential connection, but we have seen a few families where autism and Chiari malformations co-occur. And uh, then there was an interesting uh, study which was controversial, which was presented uh, by uh, Dr. Henderson, which, who is passionate about some aspects of traction and nerve damage in the uh, upper um, uh, cervical medullary region. Right at the craniocervical junction between the skull and the brain incorporates so many other issues of physics and computational methodology and um, science about the brainstem and how it affects the rest of the brain and behavior. A, a truly interesting. Well, I think one really important area of research is the genetics and looking at potential mechanisms, biological mechanisms that are contributing to disease development. And while there is definitely some research in this area, I think that that's definitely an area of research that could grow. This is the area where I've spent most of my academic career. And we know that patients with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome and also with another condition called Lowy's Deep syndrome. Both of these are hereditary disorders of connective tissue and people who have those conditions have an increased risk of developing Chiari malformation. I'm also interested in um, the physics, the basic science aspects of Chiari and syringomyelia and the commitment of CSF to uh, encourage research into the biophysics, into the mechanisms, uh, is also something that uh, is uh, very, very important. And I think they're doing great work. This year is the first year we're going to award a couple of grants to both young investigators to stimulate new blood into the research community and to foster their careers and their education, but also to sort of fund some of the more experienced investigators to really help them move maybe some high risk projects forward projects that perhaps the government might not be quite as willing to support. The reason that you should support CSF is because it affects young people and the impact on treatment and diagnosis early on 
will make a profound difference in someone's life over a, over a long period of time. You know, over the years we've collected more families. Um, we're starting to get a better understanding of different types of approaches that we can take to increase our ability to try to identify disease genes. And I really think we're at a point where over the next few years, we may actually start to get a lot more answers uh, with respect to the genetics. SAM and SM are very misunderstood disorders. Uh, not a whole lot of people know about them. People are shocked when they learn that there are hundreds of thousands of peoples in the world that are suffering from these disorders. This is a great investment for anybody who wants to support a disease that will make a big impact on patients and improve their lives. People, people in the organization uh, also have been touched by the Chiari malformation or syringomyelia. Paul Farrell, for example, has it and has had significant disability related to it and yet maintains his commitment, his drive to not only his work in his private life, but mainly to this organization in a, in a major way. Dorothy Poppy, on the other side of the coin, has a son with Chiari malformation and a dog with Chiari malformation. I mean, how close can she get to this, uh, to this problem? She's so committed, so unbelievably committed to, to cure, to research, to, to making the lives of the afflicted individuals better. I send all my prospective patients and current and former patients to the CSF website, the best, most unbiased, scientific information. And so research is important, education, communications, and that's what CSF is all about. Intelligence with a high energy, loyalty, and a long-term commitment, which is so important. So a patient from South Carolina, a young lady, top of her class, valedictorian, and uh, she, over the course of six months, had deteriorated to such an extent. When I first saw her, I really wanted to go the other way. While I may have wanted to put surgery off for a, a while to get to know them better, they wanted to go quickly, and indeed we, we did proceed with surgery, and the results were astonishing to me. Uh, it made me realize that uh, this is something that I should address more of my energy to. It's very difficult to watch your kids suffer. And in, in working with CSF, it's not just my family. I'm meeting people over and over that are living our nightmare. And you know, that's why I'm here. I, I, I want to make a difference.